Hey, 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 everyone. Anthony Fantano here, Internet's busiest music nerd. I hope you're doing well. And I want to come on here and talk about this uh, new feature that Apple and Apple Music are promoting out the wazoo week to week. I do my best as a music reviewer to keep track of whatever releases are dropping. And honestly, the easiest place to keep track of the more mainstream releases that are coming out week to week are the music streaming services that I subscribe to. Apple Apple Music being one of them. But I haven't been seeing that quite as much over the last week or so because uh, what they have been constantly throwing in my face is this new thing they're introducing, spatial audio. Here we have a couple of little short promotional snippets with vocals from Zane Lowe, where he's kind of talking up the whole spatial audio experience. And man, believe me when I say this thing is just like packed with promotional copy that uh, to me is a little bit misleading. I feel like if you're just looking at the words that Apple Music is throwing at you on the surface, it may be easy to, um, I guess, kind of get the sense that you're hearing some kind of new technology at work here. And, and maybe that is the case to a degree. I'm not entirely sure. When I think of spatial, I think of I don't know, sound and speaker placement, the direction from which sounds are coming at you as the listener, as the receiver of sounds. And uh, as far as I can tell, this this is not uh, some kind of surround sound experience that we're talking about here. This is not some, you know, 5, 8, 16 channel audio experience. When you read the promotional copy over here, uh, it describes you know, spatial audio as being something that's kind of beyond the mono and stereo world, and yet we're just kind of listening to uh, songs in, in stereo still. So how we've moved beyond stereo, I don't know. But if there are any technical aspects to spatial audio that make it an evolution past stereo sound, I'm not really seeing that in the text that Apple is throwing out there, but let's read what they have said about it. How could I take this seriously? Music is about to change forever. Introducing spatial audio with Dolby Atmos on Apple Music at no extra cost. Thank you, Apple Music. Thank you. It's a premium listening experience where sound comes to you from around and above you. Now you can hear and make music that's crisper, clearer to its original studio recordings, and unlike anything you've heard, from rock to hip hop to jazz, classical, and pop, from new music made in spatial to classics remixed or remastered for it, this handpicked playlist is the place to find songs that unlock the magic and full power of spatial sound on Apple Music. They can listen to thousands of Dolby Atmos music tracks using any headphones when listening with compatible Apple or Beats headphones, Dolby Atmos will play back automatically when available for a song. For other headphones, go to settings, music, audio, and set the Dolby Atmos switch to always on. You can also hear Dolby Atmos music using the built-in speakers on compatible iPhones, iPads, and MacBook Pros, or by connecting uh, your Apple TV 4K to get the... I'm having a hard time believing that there's going to be some kind of, like, new sonic innovation in terms of like mixing or, you know, sound alteration coming out of uh, my iPhone speaker, out of my iPad speaker. How am I going to get the sense of spatial audio just coming out of my two, you know, uh, crummy laptop speakers? Okay, from what I'm seeing now, I don't need anything super special here hooked up or anything like that. I just need to start playing these tracks. Um, I have a pair of studio headphones on, super neutral, nothing too juiced up, just so I can get a, maybe an easier sense of what's going on. And in case this is like not ideal or the best, just for a point of comparison, I also have all these tracks like queued up on my iPhone on the hi-fi so I can try and see if maybe on a larger stereo type experience will these songs feel or be shaped any differently. So getting into it, uh, I don't know, first track that really pops out at me considering I listened to it the most recently here is a Good For You from the new Olivia Rodrigo LP. Uh, let's give this a spin and see exactly what the spatial audio experience is. All right, I'm going I'm to throw a, a few tracks over on the hi-fi over here and see exactly how that sounds. So I just got done listening through a ton of spatial audio songs on Apple Music, 
on my phone as well, uh, with the Dolby audio uh, little logo there popped up at the bottom to show that it's on. And uh, I got to say, my feelings on it are a mix of intrigue, but then also in the case of certain tracks, confusion, and uh, even to a degree disgust. Because uh, for sure something is there. There's something to what is happening right now with this spatial audio thing. And uh, what it is for the most part seems to be very light touches of effects here and there, if any. But how the spatial audio thing manifests itself, for the most part on a lot of these tracks, is through panning. Panning a lot of sounds and pumping up particular sounds to kind of change the focal point of a particular track or the instrumental orientation. And as I said, this works in different ways depending on which song here in this list you're listening to. Sometimes uh, it's very subtle in its presentation and in some ways like arguably a, a slight improvement in terms of what you're hearing like on the richness scale, if uh, I could kind of put it that way, I would say uh, Marvin Gaye, What's Going On is a prime example of that. There are other uh, spatial audio tracks here that are maybe not improvements, but uh, definitely, you know, make me listen to the music in a different way. Like, uh, for example, Art Blakey, Jazz Messengers, Monin, that's in the list over here. And hearing, you know, the horns and the drums and the bass uh, panned and placed in such a unique manner, it does make me listen to that piece in a different way. It sort of makes me see it in a different light. So in that sense, it does uh, become immersive, I suppose. It does make the whole thing seem like a different experience. But then I guess there's the question of like, whether or not the whole spatial audio thing works for some of the tracks here, like in the case of some of the rap bangers, like WAP, or uh, you know even the Migos cut with uh, Cardi B as well as Nicki Minaj, like it, hearing them in a sort of spatial context doesn't really enhance the sound or the vibe of these tracks. And you know not to single it out as like a hip hop thing because you know even some of the harder rock tracks like Blink One Eighty Two, What's My Age Again, uh, hearing a driving rowdy pop punk anthem in. <laughs> sort of a somewhat panned, slightly more spaced out context doesn't really make it sound any better because that's not really the vibe of the track in the first place. And look, there are also tracks here that I'm going to be honest, like they're straight up fucking ruined, like fucking ruined. Case in point, Rush, Tom Sawyer sounds g garbage. It sounds like trash now. Like everything is just so far panned in both directions, and then from there, the volume of it is pumped up so high, it just sounds like shit. Like, it just sounds like a total mess. Another example, uh, The Doors. You can hear the rain sound effect in the song really loud now. I, I guess there's that. I don't know if that was intentional, but like, you know, in the original recording, it's pretty subtly in the background for the most part. Uh, now, like, the rain is one of the loudest aspects <laughs> of the song. Song. And uh, man, I, I think the biggest botch in the list that I listened to, and uh, look, this is like six hours of material. I couldn't hear all of it, but like quite easily the biggest botch that I heard was uh, Jackson 5, Want You Back, My Lord. Like at first it was interesting because the channels and the instrumental placements from the original recording are just like crazy, absolutely insane, like almost like flipped around, like it's a mirror image or something. But but um, the worst part about it is that Michael Jackson, young Michael Jackson's little angelic cherub voice is totally buried. It's completely buried in the mix. And that's like the thing that you want to hear the loudest. It's literally what makes the fucking song. It's Michael fucking Jackson. That's who you want to hear on I Want You Back. And, uh, <laughs> you know, not the pianos and strings just like towering over him. I think there's certainly like... Uh, room for creativity and potential when it comes to taking uh, certain tracks here and getting a little creative with panning, you know, placing things really far in one direction and, and pumping things up in terms of volume here and there so that you can hear particular aspects of tracks clear or feels like or sounds like certain things have more space. And again, that was the case 
for some of the tracks that I sampled in this list. There were some elements like, hey, maybe the bass or uh, a certain drum part or a certain uh, vocal line that like I heard a little bit clearer, a little bit louder or something like that. But uh, then there were tracks that uh, it feels like throwing them in this spatial context and uh, altering them in whatever way they were altered, like completely threw them out of whack and uh, almost like destroyed their appeal. So I don't know. I feel like uh, there is something to this kind of, but uh, it's really going to need to get worked on in terms of like finding a formula or some kind of consistency to how this is going to work, what tracks and songs and artists it's going to work for, which ones it's not going to work for. Again, while this creative use of panning and some light touches of effects, uh, there's potential there. It certainly was a neat experience in the case of some tracks. There just seems to be little consistency in terms of like how well it's applied and how it's applied. As we kind of trend further into this streaming-based future, part of me does worry about, you know, things like consistency uh, when it comes to the recordings and original recordings of music and the recordings that we've grown up on and our musical memories, because, you know, I would hate to be living in a world where the only music I have access to is like spatial audio music, because that would truly suck ass. <laughs> Like, no matter what kind of audio it is, I would much rather the the producer, the mixer, and the artist who originally created the recording having the final say as to, like, what I'm going to hear, as opposed to doing that and then sending it into the spatial audio department uh, for it to then be a hard panned in a million different directions <laughs> and then given some uh, uh, light effects here and there. I mean, you know, it, it would be crazy for us to ever reach a, a point societally where that that's kind of the the standard, but uh, you know, when everything's digital and just ones and zeros, everything is potentially uh, subject to some kind of change or alteration, without us necessarily being aware of it or uh, in favor of it. So, you know, um, spatial audio, uh, it it seems like it could be okay, but I'm skeptical. To me, this sounds like the uh, the more professional version of like that whole weird 8D audio trend that we uh, <laughs> saw on YouTube. If you've given this feature a try, let me know what you think about it. And um, over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel, Anthony Fantano, Apple Music, uh, forever.